worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. seated. So you'll notice a few things are a little bit different this morning. First of all, I'm not Tom. <laughs> Second, I do own a different shirt. If, if you were here last week, you know what I'm talking about. I'm definitely still getting to, to know my way around the building. In fact, Ryan and I just tried to enter the worship center through a side door and it was a closet. So, <laughs> but we made it. So I just have a few announcements and then we'll get back to worship. Uh, something I had a privilege to do last week with Pastor Craig was join the Tuesday night prayer meeting. How many of you have attended the Tuesday night prayer meeting before? Well, it was an awesome experience for me uh, as we lifted up family members, friends, the corridor, um, the government, the current events going on in prayer. And one of the things that really impressed Ryan and I coming here is that PBC is a praying church. And just being at that event, being a part of that prayer meeting was, was truly special for me. And we want to continue to be able to pray for you. So if you have anything going on in your life that you need prayer for, please stop by the Miracle Barn back there on the left. Uh, fill out a prayer request form so that we can continue to pray for you. I just realized I haven't introduced myself if you don't, if you don't know me. My name is Billy. I'm the new associate pastor here at PBC. And Ryan and I are so excited to be here and join you for worship. Uh, just a couple events coming up. So 
Next Sunday, August 22nd, is our prayer at Prairie, uh, Prairie Hill School, elementary school. So did any of you attend that last year, the prayer event? Okay, cool. Well, I don't know why I'm raising my hand, because <laughs> I definitely didn't attend that. Um, but we're going to be leaving right after service next week. We're going to drive over as a group to Prairie Hill Elementary School, and we're going to lift up our students as they begin their school year. And we're also just going to be praying for the students and staff at Prairie. Uh, it'll only take about 20 to 30 minutes, but please block out some time after service to join us for that. And then the next Sunday, August 29th, we're going to have our all-church prayer meeting. And that is an event that will happen right after church, and it's just a way to stay informed about what's happening at PBC. Well, again, it's so exciting to be here to worship with you. Would you bow your heads with me as I pray? Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you've given us the freedom and the opportunity to gather corporately and worship you this Sunday morning. I just pray that your spirit would be upon us, uh, that you would remove every distraction this morning. Uh, I pray for those people here this morning, Lord, who have heavy weights on their hearts, hard things going on in their lives. I pray that you would encourage them this, this morning through the worship and through the message. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, before we sing this next song, I kind of want to talk about it because some people don't really like singing this at church. Um, it's called Reckless Love. And a lot of people don't like it because God's not reckless. And it's like, yeah, he's not. He knows everything. He, he literally created us. But I think the way that he loves us is reckless a little bit in the way that we would love somebody else. To us, if you explain, like, would you kill your son to save everybody else? Everybody like, no, that's, that's crazy. But God did. God did that. But he knew the end, and he knew that he was going to be with his son again. So I love, love that. Just there's a verse that says, oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. And if you know a shepherd, they, they don't tend to stray away from the flock too much, but that's what a shepherd does because they, they want to find their, their lost sheep, and we are the lost sheep. So, yeah, if you'd like to stand with us, just think about that as we sing this next song. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, finds till I'm found, leaves the 99. And I couldn't earn it. Don't deserve it till you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Yeah. When I was your foe. Still your love far from me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worth You paid it all for me You have been so, so kind Till you give 
yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down by cell. Till you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God
guys can be seated. Children, if you want to come up, I have a short children's message. Come on up. Great. Yeah. All right, guys. So we get to start school in T minus six days. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. I am so ready for you guys to start school. We, um, so when we go back to school, we might need to brush up on some of the things that you guys have memorized. And so I was thinking about when I was putting together our message today is about things that you guys have memorized. And some of my youngest ones, like McKinnon, might not have memorized it, but I bet Jacob and Kale and Boyd, and I know Will knows a lot of these things too. What about your math facts? Did you guys memorize some math facts? Like, can you guys say them really fast? Like, what's two plus two? What's uh, seven minus five? Okay, good. You're fast. You didn't even have to think about it. You just, it just came to you because you spent some time memorizing it. What did we do last week, especially with my older guys at um, Kids Life Group? We did some memorizing. What did we memorize? You don't have to tell me exactly what it is, but what, what were we memorizing? Were we memorizing math facts? No. We were memorizing our Bible verse that corresponds with our attribute of faithful. And I would like to put out there to you guys, Bible verse, those verses that you put in your head that are stuck in there, that you take time to memorize, are just as important, but I'd actually say more important than your math facts. I want you guys to take time to deeply know God. And how we deeply know God is we know his word. And we have all kinds of fun, fun ways of knowing his word through memorization so that when somebody says something, and like two plus two equals four, you guys just, oh, you just gave me that answer right away. When you come up with a, a challenge in life or something that you cannot find your way through, God will speak to you through his word, through what you put in, through what you take time to put deep, deep in your brain through memorization. So... Friends and family, next week, my little friends are going to share our faithful verse. Those that are ready, um, we're going to share what we've memorized with you. But today, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your word, your true word, so we can know you through and through. We ask, Lord, that you sh open our minds and our hearts so that we can, we can sink your truths deep in and that they can come bubbling out just exactly when you call them to, so that they can be our guide and our light as we move forward to know you and love you. And all God's children said, Hi everyone, my name is Paige and I'll be doing our scripture today. Um, I will be reading Acts 22, 25 through 29. As they stretched him out to flog him, Paul said to the centurion standing there, is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? When the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you going to do, he asked. This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked him, tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am, he answered. Then the commander said, I had to pay a lot of money for my citizenship, citizenship, but I was born a citizen. Paul replied. Those who were about to interrogate him withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed, but he re realized that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chains. Thanks, Paige. Good morning, everybody. We have a special blessing this morning. I'm going to invite the, the Steffens to come forward. We're going to do a baby dedication for their beautiful little girl, Kaya. You can bring up the rest of the family, too, if you want to. It's up to you guys. Uh, and as they're coming up, um, I want you all to know how blessed we are to get to have babies that, like Kaya a part of our fellowship. You know, the Bible says that we are to um, give a place for the little children because we are called to come to God as one of the little children. Did you guys know that? So let's learn this morning from them as we dedicate this beautiful little girl um, to Jesus and we dedicate ourselves to Jesus and to helping her to know Jesus. Will you do that with me? Um, the dedication service begins like this. People have been bringing 
children to the, their house of worship to dedicate them to God for centuries. And that being the case, today we um, at Prairie Bibles continue that tradition. Ryan and Michelle, um, you have come here seeking God's blessing on your family, presenting your beautiful little girl, Kaya, for dedication to God. You are acknowledging and inviting the support of the Christian community. Jesus himself, as I mentioned before, made a place for the little children among the people of God when he said, do not hinder them from coming to me, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Do you, as Kaya's parents and presenting her, and presenting her affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? If so, say we do. we do. And do you promise to live with us before your daughter a life which becomes the gospel, to make sure that she is brought up in a Christian home and nurtured in the faith? If so, answer we do. we do. And will you faithfully keep your daughter under the ministry and guidance of Christ church until she, by the power of God, accepts for herself the gift of salvation? If so, answer, we will. We will. Amen. I'm going to give that to you, Michelle. Kaya, are you going to come to me? Huh? Oh, that a girl. Yeah. I'm going to turn like this for you guys to see. Child of blessing, child of promise, baptized with the Spirit sign, with this placing of our hands upon thee, we dedicate you to our God. Child of blessing, child of promise, we dedicate your life to God as you grow in faith and service. May you love him most of all. Child of joy, our greatest treasure, God you are, from God you came. Back to God we humbly give you. Live as one who shares Christ's name. Lord Jesus, as we come before you today, presenting this beautiful little baby girl to you, we ask that you would use us in her life. That you would help us to be a reflection of your salvation and your lordship. That she might fall in love with you that she might accept you into her heart as Lord and Savior, that she might choose for herself to follow you. We recognize that it takes a community of faith. It takes a mom and a dad who are committed to you, but it also takes a community of faith like Prairie Bible um, to step up alongside and to raise these children in such a way that they do fall in love with you. I'm praying, Jesus, that that happens in us and through us, and for her. So thank you, Jesus, for loving us, and thank you for loving this baby. As we offer her to you, we claim these, these requests and the promise of your answered prayers in her life. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 I may just hold her through the sermon. Is that okay? <laughs> oh, there. There. <laughs> Grandpa Mark said, have I been lifting weights because she weighs as much as her little sister? I don't know if you know. <laughs> McKenna, what do I call you? Hollywood. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord Jesus, um, again, I thank you for the privilege of being a part of a church that has the privilege of getting to be... Um, Jesus to our children and to our world. Uh, that's the calling of all of us, ultimately. And sometimes I think, I fear that we kind of fall into the, um, the habit of just doing church and forget that we are called to be the church. And for myself, I repent of that sin and ask, Lord, that... Um, that you will forgive me, that you'll forgive us for those times when we, are, we're just, we just do church rather than be in the church. 
Today we come before you, uh, during this part in the, in the service, we come before you um, to be the church. We come before you, Lord, to delve into the Scripture, which is our spiritual sustenance. And we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that, again, that, that we won't just play church, but that we will be the church, that the words that, we'll, that we um, explore will, will um, take root in us and produce fruit through us for the sake of the Gospel. I pray, Jesus, that, that we would receive the message that you have to give to us and that we would not only receive it, but that we would live it uh, for a world that, that needs to know that we might be light in a world that um, is filled with darkness, that we might be salt that would cause thirst in a world that may not even know that they are parched. I'm asking Jesus that you would take me. I am, I am a flawed, sinful human being. I make mistakes all the time. But I offer myself to you in spite of myself, in spite of that truth. I offer myself to you today to be used as a vessel of your Holy Spirit, believing and desiring that um, if you can, and I know you can, if you can use me, that you would. And that as you use this time, we would be transformed. That we might not um, leave today the same people that we came in as, but that we might be a, a more beautiful reflection of you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. My first full-time ministry job was in a little church just down the road from where I grew up. I grew up in Newton, Iowa, over in central Iowa. And this church happened to be in a, an even smaller town than Newton, Kellogg, Iowa. Anybody ever heard of Kellogg, Iowa? You've been, have you been to Kellogg? Have you? Why? <laughs> By the way, I want to repent of something this morning. I was, as Billy was doing the announcements, I was, I was repenting be, uh, because I was jealous because he's funnier than I am. <laughs> I was, I, my first full time, I was in this little church in Kellogg, Iowa. At the time, Kellogg was, the Kellogg church was about uh, 30 people, depending on the Sunday. Some Sundays were a little bit less than that. Some Sundays were a little bit more than that. But for the most part, right around 30 people, which isn't very big, right? And in fact, at that time in their history, um, as the congregation began to age and few people, fewer people began to come, they, they hadn't had a baby baptism for, or a baby dedication for ever, they were questioning whether they um, had a future at all. Which is one of the reasons, I suspect, why they were willing to um, uh, take a chance on me as their pastor. Because at that particular point in my life, I had only been a Christian for maybe four or five years. Now, I love Jesus. And I had been to seminary. I had all the educational stuff that they say you need to have in order to be a, a pastor. But I literally had almost no... Um, um, church experience at all, lay or clergy. I mean, I just didn't know what y'all did on Sunday mornings because I never went. Anyway, my first Sunday there, um, I was filled with anxiety for a bunch of reasons. Um, I was fearful that some of them wouldn't accept me as their pastor because some of them knew me before I was a Christian, if you know what I mean. But I, was just, I, just, I just didn't know what I was doing. And I just thought, what am I doing here? So I get up front and I, and I, and I, I do my best to welcome people. And when somebody from the back of the church walks in and they said, hold on, hold on. I said, what can I do for you? And he says, uh, who owns the little yellow Subaru out parked in front of the, in the church? And, and nobody's hand went up. You don't want to know why? Because I own the little yellow Subaru out in front of the church. And I said, what, why? What's the problem? And he says, well, it's now in the ditch. <laughs> Apparently, Pastor, you forgot to put your, uh, your parking brake on before you came into church today. That was the beginning of my first Sunday <laughs> as the pastor of this little church. Now, my dad came to church that day, and he was there to support me, bless his heart. He wished he hadn't come after that, but 
he came into church to support me that day. And he told me after church, he said, he says, this, this little old man was sitting next to me. He didn't know who I was, obviously. He's, he leans over and he whispers in, in my ear and he says, I don't think this kid's going to make it. <laughs> At that point, I wasn't sure I was going to make it either, to be honest with you. <laughs> it was, not, it was an, an inauspicious beginning, if you know what I mean. Now, I tell you that story this morning, you're going to understand hopefully before we're through, but I tell you that story this morning to lay a foundation for a biblical truth that we're going to be looking at as we continue our journey through um, the New Testament book of Acts. And, and the biblical truth is this, that God, listen to me now because this, is, this applies to you too, God is in the business of taking the individual threads of our lives, the cir individual circumstances of our lives, and weaving them together with the story of the gospel to change the world. Now, I want you to hear that because um, what we're going to be seeing how God did that with the individual threads of of Paul's life, but what I really want you to consider this morning is this, that, that God is in the business of taking the individual threads of your life and weaving them together with the story of the gospel to change the world. You see, one of the mistakes that you make, and I do too sometimes, is believing that these stories that we read in the Bible are stories that we read in the Bible. You understand my point? This is your story. The story of the gospel is as much about you as it is about Paul. If you're willing to give yourself to God to be used. If you're willing to give those individual threads of your life to God to be used in the story. I want you to remember that this morning. As we, uh, as we look at our passage. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to Acts chapter 22. If you don't have your Bibles, start bringing your Bibles. Actually, what we're going to... Uh, I was talking with Billy and Mark a couple, uh, earlier this week. We may actually start providing some, some Bibles to be put in your, your pews. It's going to help with some unity. We'll have you on the same page. But if you... Uh, today we don't have those obviously, but we, I'm praying that you will bring your Bibles every week. And those Sundays when you forget your Bible, we'll have Bibles here in the chairs for you. Because we want you to, um, to be using a Bible, using God's Word, God's instruction manual in your life. So this is Acts chapter 22. Before we do, go there, let me give you just a real quick refresher of where we were last week because it's going to help us to understand the message for this week. You'll remember in Acts chapter 21, right, that the Apostle Paul had been prophesied. You know what a prophecy is, right? He had been prophesied over by a, a, this strange dude named Agabus. Agabus um, came up to Paul, and, and there's a whole bunch that goes along with the story that I won't get into today, but he came up to Paul, and he told Paul, he said, this is what's going to happen to you, according to the, the Holy Spirit told me. You're going to be bound by the Jews, and you're going to be taken into custody by the Roman government. Of course, Paul's friends received that as a warning, uh, not necessarily a prophecy. They just received it as a warning saying, see, God's trying to tell you not to go. You need, you need to just change your plans and go someplace else. Why would you put yourself in a situation like that? And Paul's response was, listen, if that's the Lord's will for me, then it's the Lord's will for me. Now, something that I didn't talk about last week that I'm going to, I, I want to pick up the thread again before we get into chapter 22. In chapter 21, something happened uh, in response to that, that I think is worth retelling. It says, in this is Acts chapter 21, verse 17, if you want to look in your own Bibles. We didn't read this, but this is start at verse 17 in Acts chapter 21. It says that when, when, um, when Paul got to Jerusalem, he was met by some friends of his, and they said, listen, there's some rumors going around about you that are upsetting the Jews, and I just wanted you to know about it. And, and Paul says, well, those, those rumors aren't true. That's not, that's not even, that's fake news. They said, so this, so this if you want to uh, combat that fake, new, fake news, these are the things you need to do. So Paul 
does that. He refutes these rumors, these false rumors that are going on about him. Now, why did he do that? I'll tell you why. This is important to understand. Because Paul is not a masochist. Meaning, he didn't, just because he was willing to suffer for the sake of Christ, didn't mean that he wanted to suffer for the sake of Christ. So he was willing to do whatever he needed to do to avoid it if he could. On the other hand, He would not compromise his own integrity nor the mission of the gospel just to avoid trouble. That's the message that we need to hear too, right? Because a lot of us have a tendency sometimes just to keep our mouths shut when we should be standing up for the truth, but we don't want to offend. Well, sometimes it's a good thing to to offend. You can do it in a gracious way, but the truth is the truth. So, he, gets his, he, he does everything that he can to diffuse the fake news, but then he, it says that he went to um, the synagogue, and when he got there, he told them the story about how Jesus had changed his life. That's what we should all do, right? He gets up, he, he tells them the story about how Jesus has changed his life, and all of the work that he had done to diffuse um, the, the turmoil that was brewing because of the fake rumors gets stirred up again. And they, everybody gets uptight with him, and, and they're, they're, they're this, this, see, we told you, we knew, maybe that stuff wasn't true, but this is, and he's not but a troublemaker. So just as was foretold, he was bound by the Jews. And the more they started stirring up about this story about Jesus and how Paul was, was, was trying to take people away from the Jewish faith and uh, to, to point them to Jesus, the more people got wound up, it, there was like a riot was about to break out. So just as was foretold, in order to avoid a riot, the Jews turned him over to the Roman government, turned them over to a a soldier, a centurion, that is in the city in order to keep peace, right? Now, that's the purpose of a Roman soldier. That was the, the purpose of the centurions in the city, to keep peace in the, in the city. And as soon as Paul's turned over to him, he's thinking, he needs a good beating. That'll straighten him up. That'll, that'll appease the people that are all upset. And it'll teach him not to go stirring stirring the pot. So just as he's about ready to give him a good whooping, it says in Acts chapter 22, verse 25, Paul, he's like, he's going, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't think I like what's going on here. So he starts grasping for, what am I going to do? I don't, I don't want to beat, I don't want to take a beating. I'm willing, but I don't want to. So he says, it, it appears, this is the way it appears to me. Now, I could be interpreting this wrong. You guys interpret it however you want. You read it for yourself. This is how I interpret the story. He's grasping for straw. He's saying, I don't want to take a beat. And so he says, wait a second. Is it lawful for someone to scourge, to beat a Roman citizen? And without at least having had a trial and, and, and convicted. At that moment, he's, it's like he stops like, just like this. Go. <laughs> and he, the Bible says that he went immediately to his superior. Right? And in, in verse 27, the commander looks at, looks at Paul and he says, is it true? Are, are you a Roman citizen? And Paul goes, yeah. In that moment, you need to listen to this because it is so easy. We, what we do, I don't know if you're like me, but I read the Bible, I'll read it, you know, and I'll read through a chapter, and I think, I've read through the chapter. Isn't that nice? But what, we've, what we fail to do sometimes is to understand the entire context because in that moment, in that moment when Paul responded by, to the question, are you a Roman? He, he said, yeah. In that moment, everything changed. Did you know that? Seems like just another verse in the Bible, but in that moment, 
everything changed. In that moment, Paul's life and ministry went careening off after that into a totally different trajectory. The rest of the story of the book of Acts after this moment goes in a totally different trajectory. I would go so far as to say that after that moment, the story of the Christian church went off in a totally different trajectory. Now you're thinking, what? Well, you can read the Bible. You can find out for yourselves. But in the coming weeks, we'll, we'll unpack this a little bit more for you. As we um, come to the conclusion of the book of Acts, you'll, you'll begin to understand how that moment changed everything. That seemingly inconsequential truth, maybe, or certainly an afterthought, how that seeming afterthought changed everything. Now, at this point, you should be asking the question, well, really, was it an afterthought? See, when I read this story, it almost feels like it was to Paul. I don't know if it was. Maybe Paul is more um, strategic than I give him credit for, but it feels like an afterthought. It feels like in the heat of the moment, he goes, wait a minute, I'm a Roman citizen. But was it? I'm telling you right now. The fact that he was a Roman citizen God knew and had planned to use long before Jesus met him on the road to Damascus and he was, con- he was transformed. Because our God, listen to me, because our God is in the business of taking these seemingly inconsequential threads of our lives and weaving them together with the story of the gospel, if we're willing to let him. Did you hear that? That wasn't the first time God did that. And I'm telling you right now, it wasn't the last time he did it. Now back to our story. Told you earlier about my disastrous first Sunday at the Kellogg Church, right? Things got better after that. Um, what happened really was that they <laughs> that nobody ever stated, said it like this, but I think what it was is a oh that poor kid. <laughs> you know he's kind of he's one of us. We should do whatever we can to. to I mean he grew up just down the road. My grandkids went to school with him. Maybe we should. So they just kind of decided they were going to adopt me. And, and they, um, when I screwed up, which was often, they, they gave me grace. And when I had some crazy new idea for doing this or doing that, instead of saying, we never do it that way, they said, ah, it's Craig, let's give it a shot. <laughs> and guess what happened? That little church who just a few months before was ready to die, was sure that they were ready to die, quadrupled in size. New people started coming. Babies were being dedicated. People were getting saved. New ministry and mission uh, started to pop up all over the place. And just as important as all that stuff, these folks began to believe that there was hope for the future. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think that happened because they decided or because their new pastor happened to grow up in the area? Do you think that's why that happened? Probably not. I mean, that's certainly not the whole story, is it? Well, I'm telling you something, you need to listen to what I'm saying. That was part of the story. That singular thread was part of that story. And one of the reasons why that the beauty of the gospel blossomed there 
was because of that, was started because of a singular thread that said, ah, it's Craig. He's one of us. Let's give him a chance. You see what I'm saying to you? You understand? This is what you need to understand. You want to know what I hear almost every day? Well, Craig, you know, I'm just not that. Craig, I would like to be used for the sake of, I, I, I would love for Jesus to use, but there's just nothing in my life. I have, I'm so boring or I'm so broken. There's no way. Craig, you don't have any idea how broken I, God could not use somebody like me. Or I'm just so boring. I'm not, I am broken, but my, even my brokenness is boring. <laughs> how could God use somebody like me? There's, listen to what I'm saying. If you're the one that is saying that, you need to listen. You're wrong. Because all that stuff that you think is inconsequential, all that stuff that you think is boring, all that stuff you think no one could possibly care about or there's no possible way God could use, all that stuff in the hands of God can change the world. Even if it's just the little corner of the world called Kellogg, Iowa. Even if it's just the little corner of the world called Courtney. You understand? The question then becomes what? Am I willing to offer those individual threads of my life to my Jesus. So I'm asking, are you willing to take those individual threads of your life and offer them to Jesus? It's okay if you say, Lord, I don't know what you could possibly do with them. That's all right. It's not your job to figure out what he's supposed to do with them anyway. Your job is to say, if that's, if that's the Lord's will, it's the Lord's will. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior, don't you think it's about time? I do. It's not an accident that you are here today. It's not an accident that you saw Kaya's dedication. It's not an accident that you heard this message or you sang these songs. I don't believe in accidents. I believe in Jesus. And I believe that you are here today because you were supposed to be here today. And if you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior, it's possible that the reason that you're here today is because you're supposed to do that today. And if you are supposed to do that, you don't need me to say that prayer. You can say it right there in the chairs. But if you'd like to pray that prayer, if you're not exactly sure how to do it, or if you need some confidence to pray that prayer, I, I'll step up alongside of you. I bet there are a few other people in here who would too. But I'd be glad to do it. Right over there, that open door is the, is the prayer room of Prairie Bible. In just a moment, I'm going to be over there. And if you'd like to accept Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior, it would be my privilege to pray that prayer with you today. But remember, you don't need me. You need Jesus. That was a, a call to salvation. This is a call to lordship. This is a call to every single one of you. Isn't it about time to let Jesus be your Lord? Isn't it about time to offer Him those individual threads of your life, believing that in the hands of God, He can change the world? through you. Isn't it about time? If it is, and you want to pray about that, I'd love to pray with you that, about that too. As the band's coming up, if you need to pray with your pastor, I'll be right over there. You know, I can't wait to see this church quadruple in size because of me, you know. <laughs>
this is going to be pretty cool, but I know it's probably going to be because of Billy's jokes. Yeah, you know, everybody likes him. So. All right. If you guys like to stand, let's worship these last two songs here. All right. If I can get to the last two songs, that would be great. Gotcha. built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but only trust in Jesus name my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I cannot trust the sweetest frame but only trust in Jesus name Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace. Every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong, and the same. Righteousness alone, fall and stand before the throne. Fall is our stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, we pay strong in the same. Thank you for dealing with those complications there for a while. The, the wind in this place is just really getting to me here over here. All right. Let's just uh, praise God through this last song. Uh, we got Matt up here, so if he starts clapping, just go with him. Don't let him sit up here by himself again. 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 God, we praise you. God, we praise you. Thank you that we can praise you through mistakes and just unexpected things that happen, just like in the message said this morning. Who would have thought that uh, just following God's bidding and work pays off, you know? You know, God does. God knows that, but we need to submit. So allow us to submit ourselves throughout the week just to what you have for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I think Bill's still got some stuff for us. Can you hear me? All right. Well, thanks for being here this week. Uh, I was just thinking as Pastor Craig talked through Acts, uh, the theme of Acts could be described as Jerusalem to Rome. And God took a seemingly insignificant Pharisee named Paul, who was a Jew but also a Roman citizen, to spread the gospel from Jerusalem to Rome. And so it's worth asking the question as we go about our week, what are those one or two threads in our lives uh, that God can use to bring other people to Jesus Christ. I just want to close us in prayer uh, as we go out. Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for PBC, for your church all around the world that allows us to gather here on Sunday morning to worship you with song, to study your word. I pray that you would continue to bring more and more people into your church, Lord. I pray that as we go out this week, that you would bring opportunities for more people to hear about Jesus Christ and to hear about the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I let you go, I just remembered one thing I was supposed to tell you. If, if you're going uh, to the Prairie Hill you know, school prayer next week, please wear your PBC shirts or sweatshirts. Uh, we want to have a visual presence on campus there as we pray for the students. But that's all I got. Um, go out with this truth stamped on your life. You are loved. Thank you.
was rough. Never can, never can work out. I know.